Hello and welcome back to Here We Tow. Today I'm at Golden Castle and I'm going to be talking about caravan awnings. It's something we know quite a bit about. We've tried several different types and so I'm going to impart a bit of our experience onto you in the hope that it's going to help you. It might be that you're completely new to caravanning and know nothing about awnings, or it might be that you're a seasoned caravanner, but you're looking for a new awning or you're a little bit unsure about the different types and sizes. So what I want to do in this vlog today is explain a little bit more about the differences between a polled awning and an air awning, and then have a look at the different types in terms of a full awning, a porch awning, and a canopy. So that's the topic of today. So what we're going to do is we're going to have a look around this indoor showroom at Golden Castle and get a better idea about what it is we're talking about. Now the awnings that we've got on display here today are going to be Isabella, which is a top end awning manufacturer. We've got a couple of Van Goghs and then we've got a company called Camp Tech and I'll come to those as we move around. There's also a couple of other companies as well that are worth looking at. That's Camper, who many of you may have heard of, Bradcott and Dorema. There's also others such as Outdoor Revolution and Outwell. There's loads on the market, but many of them are going to offer polled awnings and air awnings. Now, originally when caravan awnings were developed, they were polled awnings. And what do we mean by polled? Explain what a polled awning is. Now, as it would suggest, a polled awning is an awning that is erected with the use of poles. You'll get the material of the awning itself. And then if we look in here, we see poles. Now, a lot of uh, companies now are using fiberglass poles and that will increase the, the price slightly. But the benefit of fiberglass is it's strong, but it's extremely lightweight. So you can see the poles here. So you push the poles into the awning and it erects. The good thing about polled awnings are they are very sturdy because it's more of a rigid frame. As you can see, there's not a great deal of movement in that structure. So in bad weather, a polled awning will hold up very well. And polled are very popular if you've got a seasonal pitch and you're put an, putting an awning there. Isabella are still very keen on the polled awning sector. Many other of the caravan manufacturers though have now moved over to air awnings. And I'm going to show you air awnings next. So this is the Isabella Air Cirrus. Now, Isabella were quite late to the party really with air awnings. They only started with theirs a couple of years ago, really. Before that, they had, did have a separate part um, of Ventura, which did the air awnings, but Isabella are now embracing it. So if we look into this Isabella air awning, we can see here we've got, instead of poles, we've got air beams. And all of these, instead of having poles, they have beams which are inflated and we can see they're in the roof structure and here. So the benefits of an air awning are that it keeps the awning lightweight. Most of them will have a single inflation point. Some of them will have more. The Isabella one here has got several inflation points. If I just unzip this, you'll see what I mean by an inflation point, which is here. And you'd get a pump with the awning as well. So as I say, when I say about single or um, multi inflation points, you'd connect your pump to here, pump this up, and this will inflate a whole beam in one point. You then go on to your second point and inflate further until the whole structure is inflated. With a single point, literally, you pump it up in one place and camper are very keen on that and the whole thing inflates and it's a very simple process. The only thing with air awnings is what goes up must come down and there is a chance that they can develop a puncture and those can be repaired. It happens very rarely. I must say in all our use of air awnings, we've never suffered a puncture or any form of damage to our air awning. Air awnings are still very sturdy in bad weather. We've been out in many a gale, believe me, and storm and the air awning has had absolutely no problem, but it does depend on the quality of the air awning and again, how thick the material is that you, the, that you are using on that awning. So I'll come to that a bit more in a minute. But so those are really the two different types, as I say, 
a pulled awning and an air awning. An air awning is much easier to put up, it's much quicker to put up, and it's also easier to take down. You just deflate it and then make sure you've removed the air and fold it up. Price-wise, there's not a great deal in it, to be fair, but um, it's really a personal preference as to which you prefer. The air is going to save you weight and time, but, but the pole may offer a bit more of a sturdy awning in bad weather, particularly on a seasonal pitch. So what else do we need to know? Well, we need to know next about the different types of awning. Now, some of you may have heard the words porch awning and full awning. So what we're going to do is look at a porch awning first of all. And we're just going to firstly head off in this direction over here. Now, a porch awning, don't be confused when you hear the word porch because it sounds like something small and that's definitely not the case. A porch awning is an awning that you're going to feed in through your awning channel and it's going to be fed along the straight part of the caravan channel. It's going to come down and it's not going to cover the whole of the caravan. Now this here, this is the Isabella Magnum 400 and this, despite its size, it is actually a porch awning. So this one here is four meters in length. So it's a big porch awning. Porch awnings start at around two meters in width, although they tend to use centimeters. So it might be called the two, say the Van Gogh 200 something or the Isabella 200. And that means 200 centimeters that way. You'll then go up in sizes. You might have a 300, a 400, and you can even get 500s on Van Goghs and campers. So those are big porch awnings. But the idea is they're going to cover the side of your caravan, but not the whole of it. So you're still going to have some at the front or the back. This is a polled porch awning, as I mentioned before about the poles, but again, it gives a good rigid structure. So that's an example of a porch awning. We'll just venture back again this way and show you the uh, back to the Air Cirrus porch awning. Now, on this one, this Cirrus here is three metres. We'll come to the annex in a minute, but it shows how a three metre one certainly looks quite a bit smaller than that four metre that we just looked at. And this is quite a practical sized awning for most caravans. We'll go on have a look in a little bit about caravans and how to make sure you get the right size on yours. But this is a good example of a three meter one. And what you also need to think about is the depth of the awning, particularly if you have a, a wide caravan or a big tow car, because what's it, what is important to remember is when you've got your pitch, not all pitches are wide, some are small. Uh, and we've had this personally. If you've got a big caravan, like an eight foot wide one, and then you've got a deep awning, then you're going to be much further out on your pitch. And you also need to think about pegging out because once you've pegged out, you could end up quite a lot further out. Some awnings are two and a half meters in depth. Some are up to three meters in depth. So make sure that you're thinking about how big your total outfit's going to be with the width as well. And this is an air porch awning. This is an absolute top of the range really, as far as air awnings go. You can probably see from the quality of this material. And this is a 2000 pound um, awning, which is a lot of money to spend. If you've got the money to spend, then this really probably is an unbeatable air awning. It's extremely well made. And this, it's not going to fade in the sun. It's going to withstand all the bad weather. And this is really an all year round awning. And we do have the extra bit here to give that little bit of shade. I'm not going into all the features of awnings today because different awnings do different things, as you can see about how they, they roll down, which parts open up and things like the curtains that are fitted into them. So I'm not going into the specifics. We're just talking about the different types of awnings. We can see here on the end of this Isabella, uh, a little annex or pod. These are known as annexes. And the idea is these are going to increase the size of your awning. Now, if you were just away for a weekend, something like this is usable for a weekend. It's easy to put up. You can use it. It's got plenty of nice space, but it might be if you're away for a longer period of time, like a week or two, that you want a bit more space. 
Now, and this is where the annex comes in. You can use this for various things. You can set it up as a dining room. You can use these as bedrooms as well. That's a popular thing to do with an annex. And these are quite expensive to add. An annex can be anywhere from around £300 up to something like this, which is probably going to be about an additional £1,000, I would imagine, um, on top of um, the awning price. It says here it's, it is £1,000. But the annex is you can get them to go on either side of the awning. And this isn't specific to Isabella. This is across the range of all the, the awning manufacturers that you're going to be able to get something like an annex. So a really good addition there for that bit of room. Now, if you are the sort of person that likes a much larger awning, you want a full awning, we're going to have a look at those next. Now, a full awning. I personally have never used a full awning. I don't have any personal experience of using one. This is a full awning. And as you can see, it is huge. These are specifically sized to your caravan. It's important when you buy an awning, a full one, that you know the size that you're going to need for your caravan because these are going to feed through the awning channel and they will literally be from the front to the back of your caravan. So if you get your size wrong, you're going to have too much fabric, it's going to be too big. But the websites for the manufacturers should give you the right one for your uh, particular uh, caravan. So as I say, a full awning, you're going to feed it through and it's going to take up the whole size of your caravan. These are, these are more time consuming to put up because they are such a big uh, awning. They're going to be heavier. Um, generally, a lot of the, the full awnings are poles, particularly on the Isabellas, although others do offer um, an air option. Full awnings are great if you're away for a couple of weeks on your family holiday. They're also great if you do want a lot of extra room. And these are ideal on a seasonal pitch. This is where you're going to see a full awning. It's mostly for people that have a seasonal pitch, simply because they're going to give you so much more outdoor space. They're going to be a permanent fixture for the whole season. You can leave these up. You can go away, go home. And in, generally, these will be pretty safe in all but the absolute extreme weathers. So that there's an example. Now, a lot of these awnings with them being pulled, they're actually cheaper than that uh, Cirrus that I've just showed you. You're probably going to be looking at a price starting at around 12 to 1300 pounds for a smaller full awning and it's going to be going up to 1700. It does depend on the size and the one that you choose. You can spend over 2000 pounds on one of these. Um, but generally, that's what you're going to get. We'll just move along further now. Now, here we're going to find the Ambassador Dawn. Now, this is a popular Isabella awning indeed. And again, this is a full awning. You can see the size of it and it comes in various sizes for that caravan. What I do like about the Isabellas, and this is why they're really popular, is they have various bits that you can add on. So as well as the annexes that I talked about on the porch awning, you can add annexes onto this to make it even bigger. But they have things like the cosy corner, and this is the cosy corner here. And these come in different sizes, but it's going to give you even more outdoor space for sitting, as you can see. And it's going to wear, as well as give you shade, it's almost like a windbreak as well. So there's lots of different bits that you can add to um, your awnings. You will find with Isabella's that the, the material, and I know I mentioned this before, but the material is, is such good quality and you get lovely features such as the curtains that come with them um, and various bits. So that again is a, a full awning. Now, what we'll do is we'll just make our way around. Other features that you might add um, with your awning are things like windbreaks. Now, these are often popular to put around your awning or your caravan if you've got pets, if you've got children, or you just want some added privacy. And even if you're at the coast, if you're somewhere where it's a little bit windy, a windbreak is a great addition. And these are really quite sturdy as well. They peg into the ground and they're going to give you all those various things that I've just mentioned there. This awning, again, now you can see the size of this. This is another full awning again. And this one's got the additional feature of this canopy, again, with its poles here as well. And this is called the Eclipse, and these are carbon fibre poles. Um, 
so it's going to give you more outdoor space this would be really popular if you like to tour in Europe but a huge you can just see the size of this I mean I'll, I'll venture in to give you an idea of space but coming into it it's absolutely an absolutely huge awning you're going to need a massive pitch for this let's be honest um, but then we also have an annex as well on the side there which is a another addition I mean something like this realistically is not going to fit on many pitches in the UK this sort of thing is maybe if you do pitch on a, a large CL where you've got loads of space around you otherwise yeah this might be a little bit too much for many pitches but it gives you an idea it looks absolutely amazing so those are some of the full uh, awnings what we're going to do now is venture down and have a look at some different awnings that give you a different style because these are quite traditional awnings of the Isabellas um, so we'll move down this way and just have a look so what we're going to look at next is Van Gogh and Van Gogh is a brand that we've got a lot of experience with. When we bought our first caravan, the first awning we bought was our Van Gogh Calari and that awning was absolutely brilliant and that really got us sort of into the, the Van Gogh brand um, and it never disappointed us to be fair. So what have we got here? Well, this is a Van Gogh porch awning. This is the Tuscany. Now Van Gogh is a middle of the range carav uh, caravan awning manufacturer. They're very good. All their awnings um, for your caravan are going to be air beams. They're well tested. They've been selling these for years. And I must say they are an excellent good value option of an awning similar to this sort of size. You're going to be looking at, at around a thousand pounds. But what I will say is at the end of each season, you can save a lot of money by buying last year's model and that's what we did when we got our first one now with the van goghs they have different types of fabric uh, some of them are for all year round use and they're heavy duty and they can cost you considerably more money those can be up to two thousand pounds on a large uh, four meter all season awning uh, something like this although these are usable all year they're completely waterproof the material's much lighter weight so it makes this an easier option for transporting around and putting up if you're just using it for a weekend or a week but Van Gogh very good indeed they have all the features that you want they've got loads of nice accessories that you can add as well now this one this is the Rapide. Now we've actually re reviewed the Rapide on the channel so you can look back at that and as you can see this is a much smaller awning compared to those other ones that we looked at down there with Isabella. These are very lightweight, these are generally under 20 kilos so easy to carry about, they're easy to put up. You'll see the video where Jules puts this up, um, it goes up in no time. Literally you've just got your main inflation beam here uh, and then you peg out the awning and that is it. These are ideal as well for smaller caravans because it's only two and a half metres as opposed to that huge three, four or five metre width and the depth is good as well. So you don't need that much bigger pitch. So these are really good. Um, the material is certainly suitable for use probably from March time through till October, November. You could use it in winter, don't get me wrong. Um, but that sort of winter use would certainly shorten the life of an awning like this but they are robust uh, and price wise you're looking at sort of three to four hundred pounds for something like this so it works out a good value awning um, but yeah definitely a, a smaller porch ideal for weekends or if you're just a single person having to put something up by yourself you can see the sort of space you're going to get and in winter these are useful for a weekend just to have something so you can take shoes off before you go inside somewhere to put the dog if it's wet or to put your coat so yeah something like the rapide so that's fango what i'm going to do now is i'm going to head over and have a look at um, a brand that's more of what i'd consider an entry level or budget brand and i never use the word budget in a derogatory way um, because just because something is a budget product it doesn't mean it's any less useful or well made um, it's just that it is uh, more cost effective in the way generally the way it's manufactured and this is camp tech now they've got these on display at golden castle 
I must say Camp Tech, it's not um, a brand that I've got any um, experience of, but I must say for an entry level awning, these do appear pretty well made. This one here, it's, it does reflect very much the way the Van Goghs are manufactured. So I don't know where Camp Tech have sort of developed their products from, but they do have um, many similarities to the Van Gogh product in many ways. So it'd be interesting to see how these fare. Got a nice material. We've got uh, several inflation points on these. This one is an air awning on the Camp Tech. And as we can see, it's a good size. This is a porch awning, despite how big it is. And you're going to be able to get these in a 260, a three meter and a 390. And a 390 is a good size awning. Our first one was a 390. Um, not too big for weekend use and it's certainly big enough for several weeks at a time. So this is, say, um, an idea of a, a reasonable value awning. This one, um, these range the price down here from £400 to £520 for the biggest awning, the 390, and depth-wise, 250 centimetres, so not so wide that you're going to be encroaching um, onto the outside of your pitch. So, yeah, I'd say these are probably worth having a bit of a look at if you're considering something like maybe Outdoor Revolution or Outwell. Now, Camp Tech, as well as an air awning, what I like to see is they're also embracing poles. So they're not just sticking with one. This is the one example of their poled awning. It's called the Duchess. Um, and it, this is a little bit more traditional style, going back to more of an Isabella, Bradcott or Dorema type look. And again, it's each to their own. Personally, I like the more modern style of the Van Goghs um, as opposed to the traditional style, but it's completely up to the individual. So you can see here, we've got a nice fabric gray. So that's going to sort of hide the weathering. We've got curtains in here. These doors are obviously going to zip out. Um, but yeah, I mean, again, it seems for, um, for a, a weekend or a week use, that could well be a good awning. So that's an example of one of their uh, polled ones. And price-wise, we're looking at 500 pounds. And I think 500 pounds, that's a pretty well-priced polled awning. So this is another one from Camp Tech, and this is their offering for a seasonal pitch. Now, caravanning does not have to be expensive. It can be very expensive, but obviously not everybody wants to spend that sort of money and not everyone has that money to spend. So this seasonal awning looks like a really good offering. It's priced at £685, which that is fantastic value. It is polled. It appears pretty substantial. I do like the material. Again, that feels like it will be uh, quite um, hard wearing. We've got the nice doors that open out. We've got the curtains. And you can get annexes for this as well. And they're really well priced as well, having a look at it. So in terms of a seasonal awning, if you just want something that's going to be cheap, cheerful, but does what it says on the tin, this looks like a, a fairly good um, awning to consider. So there we go. That's just an introduction really into the different types of awning. We've had a look at the, the polled awning, we've had a look at the air beam. Again, the preference as to which you prefer is up to you. We like our air awnings and I don't think we'd ever move away from those. They're easy to put up, they're easy to put away, they're lightweight and we've never had a problem with them. If you are buying for a seasonal pitch, then what I would say is you are probably best maybe looking at a full awning and go for something with poles. But again, totally up to you. If I was going for a seasonal, that's probably where I would be looking. We've looked at the differences with the porch and we've looked at the differences with the full. And as I say, a full is a large awning. It's going to take quite a bit of putting up. It's going to be quite a bit heavier and it's certainly more suited to that permanent use. A porch awning, various sizes from two meters in width all the way up to five meters. But again, the bigger you go, the heavier it will be, the harder it will be to put up and the harder it will be to pack away. So just bear that in mind. We made the mistake a couple of times of thinking bigger was better with an awning. And it turned out that bigger was not always that much better. Sometimes the, the smaller the awning, the more 
likely you are to use it because it's easier to put up, it's easier to put away. Um, so my advice with an awning is probably buy the smallest one you actually think you can live with. That is probably going to be the best advice. What I want to do next is I just want to venture to a caravan and I just want to give you some tips about when it comes to you buying an awning, what you need to be looking at to make sure that your awning is going to fit your caravan because this is an easy thing to fall foul of. So we're just going to have a one look at one quick tip um, which may help you with buying an awning. So let's go and find a caravan. So when you're looking at getting the awning for your caravan, now the awning is going to feed into the awning channel and there's going to be points on the side at the front and the back. So the channel runs the whole length around the caravan, as you can see. Now, with a, a full awning, it's important what I was saying about sizes, because you're going to feed the awning in and it is literally going to cover from that end all the way to this end. So the full awning is going to be the full size of your caravan. And once it's up, you then don't have to worry about what's going on on this side of the caravan because it's going to take up the whole size of it. With a porch awning, it's a little bit different and this is where you've got to think. Now, as I said, there was different sizes. When you feed your porch awning in, you're going to feed it in either from the front or the back. We always feed from the front. And it's going to then go along this flat side of the awning channel. So it's, it's not going to be coming down here and it's not going to be there at the back. So on a smaller caravan like this, if you were to buy a five meter width um, porch awning, you are going to be pretty much at the limit of it on that, this sort of caravan. A three or four meter awning would be obviously more of a sensible choice. You've really got to think about that sort of size at the top there. If you've got an even smaller caravan, like you've got a small two berth, then you want to be looking at those smaller porch awnings because your rail up there is going to be much shorter. So really bear that in mind. The next thing you need to think about is where that awning is going to come down the side of your caravan, whether it be a pole awning or an air awning, you're going to have beams or poles that come down and meet the side of your caravan, the side wall, and create that seal to stop the wind and rain blowing in. And the reason I'm saying this is important because as you can see here, now this caravan, the door's quite far forward. We've got utilities here. We've got a window here. So your awning is going to have to come one side of the door because the idea is you come out of the door into the awning. But as you can see here, you're either going to have to come down across your window with your awning, which means you won't be able to open this. And if you come down here, you may well be covering a locker box and you won't be able to access the locker box. You're also going to have to think about your barbecue point and stuff like that. So for me, I would maybe consider bringing an awning down here so it comes down here so you can still access the box and use the window. And then coming back again, it's where you're going to think about the awning coming down, whether that be three meters, four meters, because again, if you've got a shorter awning, something like a 260, that's going to come down there. It's going to come across this box. And once it's pegged down, you then won't be able to use your access under there. Equally, if you have your toilet cassette on the near side of the caravan, which some do, you need to think about blocking access into your toilet cassette. And you certainly don't want to be blocking um, your Dometic uh, vents for your fridge freezer. So these are things to think about. And it, it can become all uh, a little bit confusing at first, but my advice is, measure where the an awning would go. So if you're looking at a four meter awning, measure your four meters, think right, I want my first beam there, measure back and just see where that's going to take you down this end so you know it's going to fit. Again, as I say, you don't want it hanging off the back here because that is not the idea with a porch awning. A full awning, not a problem. A porch awning could be a problem. So those are just a couple of things to think about with um, the caravan. So for down here, you're going to be able to get a draft skirt. And as you can see, we've got a channel that runs along here 
and that goes the full length around and there's different points here where you can feed into the channel to put your draft skirt you can also get them to cover the wheels and draft skirts stop drafts obviously um, and they are really good especially in cold weather we've always used a draft skirt um, if you do have pets as well they will stop uh, some pets from escaping obviously not if you've got one that likes to burrow its way out but it will just give you that uh, little bit of security there and privacy as well one thing that I'd suggest you do with your awning channels is get a silicon spray um, before you start using the awning and just give it a spray around the channel because that will lubricate the channel and it will make sliding the awning through a lot easier not that i know much about that because jules does all our awning stuff but yeah he he always uses the silicon spray we've always used it probably twice a year just to keep it lubricated um, so yeah and silicon spray as well is great on cassette boxes you can use it on the rubbers as well just to keep your seals lubricated but i'm digressing now away from awnings so those are some things to think about um, when you're working out the best size for you. So let's just venture back to the awnings and we'll finish off. So there we have it, caravan awnings, something we know quite a bit about ourselves. Hopefully today we've learned a bit more about the pole awning and the air awning and a full awning and a porch awning and what to think about when you're measuring up on your own caravan and the problems that you might encounter. I'd just like to say thank you to Golden Castle in Gloucestershire who've let us come and film this awning vlog today for you. And I'd just like to say, as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.